Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 10th August 2019. These are the articles that has been chosen for today's analysis. It has been given along with the page numbers from different Hindu editions belonging to the cities of Chennai, Bengaluru, Delhi and Tiruvannathapuram editions. The link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the time stamping for the displayed articles is given in the description box below. And for the benefit of smartphone users, it is also provided in the comment section. Let's move on to the first article analysis. This article is about the measure taken by the Rajasthan state government on mob lynching and honor killing. The syllabus with which the discussion can be linked has been highlighted here for your reference. First, before going into the article discussion, let us know or understand what is mob lynching and what is honor killing. Mob lynching can be defined as an extra judicial killing of a person by a mob or by a group of people. It is called as extra judicial because it does not involve a fair trial. Then honor killing is killing a member of the family especially a girl or woman because the murderer believes that the member of the family has brought dishonor to the family or the member of the family has violated community principles or religious principles these two crimes have emerged as preponderant or widely prevalent social evils throughout india it has now become inevitable or unavoidable that societies and governments must come up with new ways to combat such hate crimes. Here, hate crimes are the crimes that are carried out because of prejudice or hate towards a person or group on the basis of their religion, race, etc. Now, according to the author of this editorial, in the country we are witnessing vigilante mobs that are carrying out crimes in the name of cow protection prevention of sale of beef or transport of cattle. Here, vigilante groups are self-appointed groups which takes law enforcement into their hands without legal authority. Now, along with this, there are also incidents of uh, murderous attacks on young couples in the name of preserving presumed family or community honor are also increasing in the country. Now, considering these, it is important to note that the Rajasthan government has passed a Rajasthan Protection from Lynching Bill of 2019. With this legislation, Rajasthan has become the second state after Manipur to pass legislation in this regard. Actually, in the year 2018, the Supreme Court focused on the cases of mob lynching. The Supreme Court said that the rising intolerance and growing polarization in the society must be curbed or controlled. Here polarization means the people are divided into group having different opinions or beliefs. The Supreme Court actually meant that the rising intolerance and group formation against those who sell or uh, who, those who eat beef should be controlled because these groups are the ones that indulge in mob lynching. Then the Supreme Court requested the states to pass law to criminalize mob lynching. This is to instill a sense of fear among the perpetrators. Now, based on this direction only, Rajasthan government was forced to pass an anti-lynching law. But there is one another important reason to pass this law. According to the Minister of State Parliamentary Affairs, 86% of mob lynching incidents uh, that are reported in India after 2014 were in the state of Rajasthan. That is why Rajasthan government was forced to pass an anti-lynching law. So now let us discuss some of the important provisions of the bill. This bill covers any act of violence by a mob on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth, language, dietary practices, sexual orientation, political affiliation or ethnicity. Now these acts of violence can be spontaneous or they can even be planned. The bill says that two persons are enough to constitute a mob. Hence this is a progressive law that covers a wide range of aspects of mob lynching. The bill says that when the mob attacks result in death of a person, it is punishable with life imprisonment and a fine of up to 5 lakh rupees. The bill also provides for appointment of a nodal officer to prevent lynching and for the districts, the police chiefs should act as a coordinator. Then the bill also deals with compensation to victims 
and uh, rehabilitation measures to those who were displaced because these are the persons who were displaced to other place due to a hate crime. Then the Rajasthan government has also passed one another bill. It is the prohibition of interference with the freedom of matrimonial alliances in the name of honor and tradition bill of 2019. Now from the name of this bill itself you can say what the bill is actually talking about. This bill provides for life imprisonment or death penalty for uh, murdering couples in the name of family honor. According to the author, this bill aims at Khap Panchayats, which uh, interdict or ban intercaste marriages. Here, a Khap Panchayat is a union of a few villages that exist mainly in the North India. These Khap Panchayats have uh, emerged as quasi judicial bodies, they pronounce harsh punishments based on age-old customs and traditions. Now, based on this bill, the author is doubtful that whether the courts will look at such family honor murders as uh, rarest of the rare cases because the bill provides death penalty also for the family honor murders. But the courts sentence with death when it is the rarest of the rare case. So, the author is not sure whether the court will see a family honor murder as a rarest of the rare case to warrant death penalty. Now, these two bills are progressive and they are very much necessary at this time as there is a rise in hate crimes in our society. These crimes are on the rise though at varying degrees all over India. So, other states must look at these two bills as benchmark decisions to curb hate crimes and they should also implement similar laws. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. The split practice question will be discussed in the last session. This article is about the rotavirus vaccine. The syllabus with which the discussion can be linked has been given here for your reference. The news article says that Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has decided to provide rotavirus vaccine to every child across all states and union territories and that too by September 2019. This decision has been taken as an ambitious plan under the 100 days agenda of the newly elected government. This decision was stated by the Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare while speaking about the expansion of rotavirus vaccine to the entire country. He added that the government is committed to ending morbidity and mortality in children due to diarrhea by 2022. Here morbidity is the condition of being diseased and mortality is the death of the child. So, to end this by 2022, strengthening the routine immunization is an essential investment and it will also ensure a healthy future of the country. Here, immunization is the process by which a person is made immune or resistant to an infectious disease by the administration of a vaccine. Vaccines are substances that uh, stimulate body's own immune system. This protects the person against an infection or disease. Now, this decision is important because diarrhea is one of the biggest cause of death in children and rotavirus is the one of the most common causes of severe diarrhea in children who are less than 2 years of age. The Union Health Minister further added that the government is also committed to increasing the full immunization coverage and for ensuring that the benefit of the life-saving vaccines is provided to every child. He also added that no child in the country should die from vaccine preventable diseases. So, the expansion of the rotavirus vaccine under the universal immunization program is a step in that direction. Now, let us see the immunization program in India. The immunization program in India was introduced in 1978 as an expanded program of immunization that is EPI. It was introduced by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare of Government of India. Then in the year 1985, the program was modified as Universal Immunization Program or in short UIP. This UIP was implemented in a phased manner to cover all the districts in the country by the year 1989 to 1990. It was one of the largest health program in the world. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare provides several vaccines to infants, children and pregnant women 
through the universal immunization program then in the year 1992 uip became a part of child survival and safe motherhood program then since 1997 the immunization activities have been an important component of national reproductive and child health program also it is currently one of the key areas under national rural health mission so under the universal immunization program the government of india is providing vaccination to prevent many vaccine preventable diseases such as diphtheria pertussis tetanus polio measles then severe form of childhood tuberculosis and hepatitis b then diarrhea also so now based on the government's decision it becomes important to know about the rotavirus and rotavirus vaccine the rotaviruses are classified as a genus in the family of rheoviridae rotavirus is a highly contagious virus it is the most common organism that causes severe diarrhea and death among children under the age of 5 this is because the rotaviruses infect nearly every child by the age of 3 to 5 years they are globally the leading cause of severe dehydrating diarrhea in children who are aged less than 5 years according to world health organization in the low income countries the median age at which the primary rotavirus infection occurs is from 6 months to 9 months and also 80% of the disease occurs among infants who are less than 1 year old but if we consider high income countries according to who the first episode of the rotavirus infection can be occasionally delayed and it occurs at the age of 2 to 5 years only but still majority of the infection still occurs in infancy as about 65% of the infection occurs among infants who are less than 1 year old then according to unicef global database of 2018 diarrhea as the cause for child mortality or diarrhea as the cause for the death of the children in india is 9.2% Also in India every year 37 out of every 1000 children born are unable to celebrate their 5th birthday that is they die before the age of 5 and one of the major reasons for this is diarrheal deaths it is estimated that rotavirus cause around 8 lakh 72000 hospitalizations and it also causes around 32 lakh 70000 outpatient visits and around 78000 deaths occur annually in india due to this rotavirus so how this rotavirus is actually transmitted to humans the who position paper on rotavirus of 2013 states that the transmission of this virus occurs primarily by the fecal oral route fecal oral transmission means the uh, germs that cause illness are found in the stool or feces of an infected person and they are spread to another person this occurs when a person touches the stool of an infected person or when a person touches an object that is contaminated with the stool of an infected person and that person gets ingested with the germs this is because an object or surface can appear clean but uh, it can still have germs that can cause illness a disease that is spread by the fecal oral route can be transmitted from person to person or even through food or even through water this can happen when a person fails to wash their hands properly after using the bathroom and even when they handle food that is eaten by others or uh, when there is a feces contaminated water supply so rotavirus can transmit directly from person to person or also indirectly via contaminated fomites that is the objects or materials which are likely to carry infection such as clothes utensils and furnitures This rotavirus infection affects primarily the small intestinal villi. Villi are the small finger-like projections that are present in the small intestine. These villi absorb food that is digested. This infection reduces the absorptive capacity of the villi, which results in diarrhea. Then the incubation period of this rotavirus diarrhea is one to three days. The symptoms of this disease are sudden onset of watery stools which is often accompanied by fever and vomiting. Sometimes there may be abdominal pain also. The diarrhea and the associated symptoms may last 3 to 7 days. If it is not treated then it may result in dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, shock and finally it will lead to 
death. This rotavirus diarrhea actually presents in similar manner like any other diarrhea, but it can mainly be prevented through rotavirus vaccination. Other diarrhea can be prevented through general measures like good hygiene, frequent hand washing, safe water and safe food consumption, exclusive breastfeeding and vitamin A supplementation etc. So, that is why providing immunization to this rotavirus disease is very important. Hence, for protecting rotavirus, there is a rotavirus vaccination or it is in short called as RVV. It gives protection to infants and children against the rotavirus diarrhea. There are four oral live attenuated rotavirus vaccines that are available internationally and these vaccines are WHO pre-qualified. Here attenuated means the force of the vaccine virus is reduced. The four vaccines are Rotarix, Rotatec, Rotavac and Rotaseal. All four vaccines are considered as highly effective in preventing severe gastrointestinal disease. And you can remember these vaccines as all of them start with Rota. So, you can easily say if a vaccine starts with Rota, then it is a Rotavirus vaccine. So, keeping in view the burden of disease which can be prevented through vaccination, the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization that is NTAGI recommended the introduction of rotavirus vaccine in the universal immunization program. So, under this, three doses of rotavirus vaccine are provided free of cost and they are provided along with other vaccines under the UIP. They are given at six weeks or uh, at one and a half month of the age of child. Then they are given at 10 weeks or uh, two and a half month of age of child. And then they are given at 14 weeks or three and a half month of age of child. Now in India, the rotavirus vaccine was actually introduced in the year 2016 in a phased manner. It started with four states initially and later it was expanded to seven more states. So by the end of 2018, in 11 states, the rotavirus vaccine was available. At present, the vaccine has been further expanded to 17 more states till now. So, rotavirus vaccine is now available in 28 states and union territories. Now, based on the recent decision by the government of India, by September 2019, the vaccine will be available in all the states and union territories. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. This practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article discussion, which is about Article 371F and Ghorka land issue. The syllabus which is given here can be linked to this discussion. Now, we have been discussing since 6th August regarding Article 370. Article 370 dealt with the special provisions regarding the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, the special provisions of Article 370 have been amended by a presidential constitutional order. Now, remember that Article 370 still exists and as per the amendment and as per the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of uh, 2019, the state of Jammu and Kashmir has been bifurcated into the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and the Union Territory of Ladakh. Now, this news article states that the Chief Minister of Sikkim has welcomed the amendment of Article 370. The Chief Minister has also assured the people of Sikkim that the central government will not interfere with Article 371F. The news article also states that the Union Home Minister has assured in the Parliament that the special provisions for certain other states of India will continue. So now, what is this Article 371F? Article 371F is a special provision which is introduced in the Constitution of India for the state of Sikkim. Now, know that Sikkim was ruled by the Namge dynasty since 1642. The Namge dynasty ruled over Sikkim as hereditary kings for about 332 years. The title which was given to the kings was Chogyal or the heavenly king or the king who rules with righteousness. Now, they followed Buddhism. When India became independent, a treaty was signed between India and Sikkim. According to this treaty, Sikkim was recognized as a protectorate with Chogyal as the monarch. Here, protectorate means a state that is protected or controlled by another state. So, here as per the treaty, Sikkim would be protected by India. 
but due to the political unrest in Sikkim, Sikkim became a full pledged state of Indian Union on 16th May 1975. So, the institution of Chogyal or the monarchy was abolished and Sikkim became like any other state of India after an agreement between the Union of India, the King of Sikkim and the political parties in the state of Sikkim. Now, the article 371F was inserted into the constitution of India as per the Constitutional Amendment Act of 1975. Now, here know that this article 371F deals with the special provisions relating to the state of Sikkim. This article was inserted mainly to ensure the special needs and circumstances of Sikkim. As per Article 371F, Sikkim's Legislative Assembly will consist of not less than 30 members and one seat will be allotted for Sikkim in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Now, after the Kashmir issue, the Chief Minister of Sikkim has assured that the central government will not interfere and the central government will not amend Article 371F. Now, this news article also mentions about Gorkha land. The Chief Minister of Sikkim has said that the central government has to decide on recognition of Gorkha land as a union territory. If you see, the political parties in this area have been demanding to recognize Gorkha land as a separate union territory. If you see in this picture, the political organizations from the Darjeeling district, Kalimpong district and the Tehsils or the Taluk that lie south to the Bhutan like Pashideva, Kodibari, Siliguri, Matigara are fighting for Ghorka land. The Nepali speaking uh, Ghorka people live in majority in these areas and the political party named Ghorka Janmukti Morcha has a huge political influence in this area. They had been demanding for statehood for a long time. But after the bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir into the Union Territory of JNK and Union Territory of Ladakh, the political parties of Ghorka land, especially Ghorka Janmukti Morcha, are now protesting to recognize Ghorka land as a Union Territory. They have been protesting on the context that they are forced to learn Bengali. After a lot of internal violence, negotiations happened between the center, state and the former political party which is named as Gorkha National Liberation Front. As a result of this, Darjeeling Gorkha Hill Council that is DGHC was formed in the year 1988. This hill council had autonomy that is self-rule over 19 functional areas which was uh, devolved or transferred from the state list. This was replaced by the Ghorka Land Territorial Administration that was constituted in the year 2012 under the Ghorka Land Territorial Administration Act of 2011 and this act was constituted by the state government of West Bengal. However, still there is a demand for separate union territory for Ghorka Land. Now, in this news article, the Chief Minister of Sikkim has also said that there is no question of merging Ghorka land with the state of Sikkim. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. The split practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article discussion, which is about common service centers. The syllabus that has been given here can be linked with the discussion. This article talks about common service centers target of building 1 lakh electric vehicles charging stations in India in the few years. In India, majority of vehicles at present are using internal combustion engine. India is planning to move on to electric vehicles in the near future. Now, this is to decrease our dependency on fossil fuel and to reduce global warming by reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the vehicles. In this context, the common service centers or CSCs plan to open 1 lakh charging stations for electric vehicles across the country in the next few years. CSCs are to deliver various uh, e-government services to the village people and it comes under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. According to the CSC e-governance office, the plan is to open 1 lakh charging stations in the country. This is to be done by the time when at least 30 percent of the vehicles in the country are electric vehicles. This will benefit the village level entrepreneurs or VLEs. Village level entrepreneurs ensure effective delivery of e-government services to the people through the CSE. The CSE has already started a pilot project in Delhi and they are going to start pilot projects in other states also. Here, a pilot project is a small scale preliminary project. 
the pilot project analyzes the pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages of that particular project before going for the large scale projects now initially these charging stations will have facility to charge both lead acid battery and lithium ion battery the lead acid battery and lithium ion batteries are the two rechargeable batteries that are used in electric vehicles the lead acid batteries are cheap in price as compared to the lithium ion battery whereas the lithium ion batteries are more efficient and it requires less maintenance but still the lead acid batteries are used more because they are cheap so a transition or switching to the more efficient lithium ion battery will take time hence the charging station should provide facility to charge both these batteries for the time being now this csc has tied up with the technology giant siemens this tie up is for building the charging infrastructures the price for each charging station is expected to be in the range of rupees 70000 to rupees 3 lakh if you see csc is not going for a uniform model throughout india they will have different business models this depends upon the demand and consumer behavior they are also planning to provide a battery swapping model it means csc's will provide facilities and it will help people to switch from the lead acid batteries to lithium ion batteries now let us discuss some important fact related to this topic like what is csc and csc e governance csc or uh, common service center program is under the ministry of electronics and information technology the csc's offer e governance services such as bill payments filling up of forms and submission of forms etc now these csc's are not just for service delivery they also promote rural entrepreneurship and they improve rural livelihood csc's contribute to build a digitally inclusive society the village level entrepreneurs ensures effective delivery of service through csc now the csc e governance services india is a special purpose vehicle where the special purpose vehicle is set up under the ministry of electronics and information technology now a special purpose vehicle is usually created to achieve small or specific objectives for example the special purpose vehicle or spv that is created for the implementation of smart city mission now also know that the csc has been incorporated under the companies act of 1956 its objective is to oversee the csc schemes and to enable access to information technology in rural areas with this we have come to the end of this article discussion the practice question displayed here will be discussed in the last session this next discussion is with respect to this picture the picture depicts a traditional dance performed by the tribals this traditional dance was performed on the occasion of world adivasi day in the khammam district of telangana the world adivasi day is also known as international day of world's indigenous peoples so what do we actually mean by the term indigenous according to un no official definition of indigenous has been adopted by any un system body instead they have developed a modern understanding of this term based on the following such as if the people have self identified them as uh, indigenous peoples at the individual level and if they have a historical continuity with pre colonial and or pre settler societies and having a strong link to territories natural resources and if the people have distinct social economic or political systems and if they have distinct language culture and beliefs then if they form a non dominant groups of society and then finally if they resolve to maintain and reproduce their ancestral environments and systems as distinctive peoples and communities now these are the understandings based on which the people or the uh, group of people are identified as indigenous people the term indigenous has prevailed as a common term for many years but in some countries other terms are also preferred including tribes first peoples or first nations aboriginals ethnic groups adivasi and janjati so now why is it so important to celebrate a day for indigenous people this is because according to united nations there are an estimated 370 million indigenous people in the world they are living across 90 countries they make up less than 5% of world's population 
but they account for 15 percent of the poorest people. The most interesting and important fact is that they speak an overwhelming or enormous majority of the world's estimated 7,000 languages and they represent 5,000 different cultures. Indigenous peoples are inheritors and practitioners of unique cultures and they are practitioners of ways of relating to people and the environment. They have retained social, cultural, economic and political characteristics that are distinct from those of the dominant societies in which they live. Despite their cultural differences, indigenous peoples from around the world share common problems related to the protection of their rights as distinct peoples. Indigenous peoples have sought recognition of their identities, recognition of their way of life and their right to traditional lands, territories and natural resources for many years. Yet throughout history, their rights have always been violated. Today, indigenous peoples are among the most disadvantaged and vulnerable groups of people in the world. The international community now recognizes that special measures are required to protect their rights and to maintain their distinct cultures and way of life. In order to raise awareness of the needs of these population groups, every 9th August is celebrated as the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. In December 1994, the United Nations General Assembly decided that the International Day of the World's Indigenous People shall be observed on 9th August every year. This day was chosen in recognition of the first meeting of the UN Working Group on Indigenous Populations that was held in Geneva in the year 1982. This year's observance is dedicated to Indigenous Peoples' languages. So the theme for the year 2019 is Indigenous Languages. Now this theme is in the view of 2019. Uh, which is being marked as the International Year of Indigenous Languages. This was declared by the United Nations in order to raise awareness of the indigenous languages. So remember 2019 is the International Year of Indigenous Languages. This is because large majority of the languages which are in danger are spoken by indigenous people. According to UN, it is estimated that every two weeks an indigenous language disappears. This places the respective indigenous cultures and knowledge systems at risk. That is why on the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples, the goal is to draw attention to the critical loss of indigenous languages and the urgent need to preserve, revitalize and promote those languages at national and international levels. The indigenous languages in particular are a significant factor in a wide range of other indigenous issues also, such as education, scientific and technological development, biosphere and the environment, freedom of expression, employment and social inclusion. If the language is not known, then reaching the indigenous people is very difficult. That is why preserving the indigenous people and their culture and language is very important. Now also know that in the year uh, 1990, the UN General Assembly proclaimed 1993 as the International Year of the World's Indigenous Peoples. So 2019 is the International Year of Indigenous Languages. 1993 was the International Year of the World's Indigenous Peoples. Then also the General Assembly established two international decades of the world's indigenous peoples. The first is from 1995 to 2004 and the second decade is from 2005 to 2014. This was done with the goal of strengthening international cooperation for solving problems that are faced by the indigenous peoples. The problems faced by them in areas such as human rights, the environment, development, education, health, economic and social development should be solved. That was the goal of UN's proclamations. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. This is the last article that has been taken up for discussion. It is about repo rate and transmission of repo rates. The syllabus with which the discussion can be linked has been given here for your reference. The commercial banks in India need capital to give for lending activity. One way of getting the capital is from the Reserve Bank of India, which is the Central Bank of India. The Reserve Bank of India provides money to the banks overnight. So, repo rate is the interest rate at which the RBI gives money or loans to the commercial banks. For getting the loans, banks will have to keep security with the RBI. 
So, repo rate can also be defined as the rate at which banks will buy back or repurchase the securities from the RBI at a later stage. Usually, the securities are the government securities. Repo rate is one of the instrument of the monetary policy of the Reserve Bank of India. The monetary policy committee decides the repo rates on a periodic basis. This monetary policy committee consists of six members and the governor of RBI heads the monetary policy committee. He is also the ex officio chairperson of the monetary policy committee. Here ex officio means by virtue of one's position. In this case, since a person is the governor of RBI, by the virtue of this position, he becomes the chairperson of monetary policy committee. Now, also know that as per Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934, the monetary policy committee must meet at least four times in a year. The current practice is that the monetary policy committee meets at least once in two months. In the news article, it is generally mentioned that RBI has changed the policy rates or the repo rate. But it is actually the monetary policy committee which changes the policy rate. So, remember this from the examination point of view. Now, the banks lend the money to the businesses or individuals. The interest rates at which the banks lend money to the borrowers varies from one bank to another. And whenever there is an adjustment that is made in the repo rates by the monetary policy committee, the commercial banks must ideally reduce or increase their lending rates. This is called as the transmission of the rate. So, the current practice is that it is the discretion of the commercial banks to pass on the benefits of the repo rate cuts or the repo rate increase. Whenever there is a repo rate cut, it means that the banks are on the profit side because they will be able to get more money at less interest rates. But sometimes certain banks will not decrease the lending rates on their side immediately when the monetary policy committee has reduced the repo rates. It means that the transmission of the rate cuts is improper. This is because it is the discretion or the choice of the commercial banks to pass on the rate cut benefits to the borrowers. Now, the news article discusses that certain public sector banks have started to link their retail loan rates that is the lending rates with the repo rates that is decided by the monetary policy committee of RBI. This means that if the RBI of India changes the repo rate, then the retail loan rates or the lending rates of the commercial banks will change automatically. This news article states that four public sector banks have said they have either linked the lending rate to repo rate or they are in the process of linking the lending rate to the repo rate. The four public sector banks are Bank of India, Syndicate Bank, Allahabad Bank and Union Bank. The main advantage of linking the repo rates with the lending rates is that faster transmission of rate adjustment happens. So, when the repo rate is cut immediately the lending rates are also reduced. When the lending rates are reduced the borrowers will think of borrowing more money since the interest rates are low now. So, where there is more liquidity or more money, the business activities will grow and overall the economy will grow. But if the transmission of rates happens at a slower pace, then the economy is likely to grow slowly as more money will be concentrated in the banks and the borrowers will not be in a position to borrow money due to a higher interest rates. But when the repo rates are cut and when there is a faster transmission of rates, then the depositors are likely to be affected since they will get low returns on the money that they have deposited. It is because the interest rates for the deposits will also be reduced automatically now. The other solution is that whenever there is a hike in the repo rate and when there is a faster transmission of rates, the depositor will benefit and the borrowers will suffer. Now, this news article also speaks about MCLR. MCLR is nothing but the marginal cost of funds based lending rate. The MCLR is an internal benchmark rate or internal reference rate for the bank. MCLR refers to the minimum interest rate of a bank below which it cannot lend except in some cases that is allowed by RBI. There are different types of MCLR which is specified by RBI such as uh, overnight MCLR, one month MCLR, three month MCLR, six month MCLR and one year MCLR. 
This news article tells that many public sector banks have reduced their MCLR rates as soon as the repo rate was reduced by the Monetary Policy Committee. Now remember that on 7th August the Monetary Policy Committee reduced the repo rates by 35 BPS from 5.75% uh, to 5.40%. So the present repo rate is 5.40 percentage. Now you need not go through the entire rates that have been mentioned in the news article. From this news article just try to know what is meant by repo rate, transmission of rates, how repo rate cut and transmission of rate influence the decision making of the banks and what is meant by MCLR. With this we have come to the end of article discussion sessions. This practice question will be discussed in the next session. We have come to the last session for the day that is the practice questions discussion session. If you look at the first question, it is based on rotavirus disease. Three statements have been given and we have to choose the incorrect statement. Now, if you see the first statement, it states it is a zoonotic disease caused by the cattle. Now, this statement is wrong because rotavirus is not caused by animals. It is transmitted through the fecal oral transmission. It means that the germs that can cause illness are found in the stool or feces of an infected person and they are spread to another person. So this statement is wrong. Now the second statement states it is the most common organism that causes severe diarrhea and death among the children under the age of 5. Now this statement is correct. We discussed this during our analysis. So this statement is correct. Now the third statement states rotavirus vaccine is a part of universal immunization program. Now our today's discussion was totally based on this line only. Yes, it is a part of universal immunization program and this program comes under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and under this program the vaccines are given free of cost. Under this program three doses of the vaccine are given to the children who are uh, at the age of 6 weeks, 10 weeks and 14 weeks. So this statement is also correct. The question asks for the incorrect statement. Here statement 1 is the incorrect statement. So the correct answer to this question is option A 1 only. Now this next question is based on article 371F. The first statement states this article contains special provisions with respect to the state of Sikkim only. Now this statement is correct. During our discussion, we saw that Article 371F was inserted into the Constitution as per the 36th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1975. And this article contains special provisions with respect to only the state of Sikkim. Okay, so this statement is correct. Now, the second statement states, according to this article, the Legislative Assembly of the state of Sikkim shall consist of not less than 30 members. Now, this statement is also correct because as per the clause A of article 371 F the legislative assembly of the state of Sikkim shall consist of not less than 30 members. So this statement is correct and the statement 1 is also correct. So the correct answer to this question is option C both 1 and 2. Now this next question is based on common service centers. Three statements have been given we have to choose the correct statement. Now in this the first statement is correct. Because during our discussion, we saw that common service centers promotes rural entrepreneurships and they also improve rural livelihood. So this statement is correct. Now, if you look at the second statement, it states it is under Ministry of Rural Development. Now, after seeing the first statement, you will think this program comes under Ministry of Rural Development, but it is wrong. This program comes under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology because CSC offers e-governance services such as bill payments, filling up of forms and submission of forms etc. That is why it comes under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So this statement is wrong. Now if you look at the third statement, it states CSC e-governance is a special purpose vehicle registered under the Companies Act of 1956. Now this statement is also correct. We discussed this during our analysis. So the question asks for the correct statements. Here statement 1 and 3 are correct. The final correct answer to this question is option B 1 and 3 only. Or you can approach this question in a different method also. Now after seeing that uh, statement 2 is wrong, if you see the options given below, option A, C and D, all the three have statement 2 as options. So you can uh, simply eliminate all these three and you can arrive at the final answer of option B 1 and 3 only.
in this next question we have to choose the incorrect statement from the four given statements now the first statement states faster transmission of repo rate cuts by the banks will benefit the borrowers and like that four statements have been given now during our discussion we saw that whenever repo rates are cut the borrowers will be benefited since the interest rates will be low and the borrowers will be able to borrow more money from the bank and whenever there is an improper transmission of rates that is when the banks are not passing on the rate cut benefits to the borrowers it will affect the borrowers and at the same time it will benefit the depositors because the rates will be considerably high and so the returns will be high for the depositors so based on this you can say that statement a b and c are conceptually correct now whenever there is a repo rate cut it generally affects the depositors only because the interest rates will be low and so the returns from the money deposited by the depositors will also reduce so it affects them and it will not benefit them and with this if there is a faster transmission of rate cut then the depositors will be affected immediately and they will not be benefited so the correct answer to this question is option d because it states that faster transmission of repo rate cut by the banks will benefit the depositors but conceptually it will not benefit them it will affect them now finally let us see one main question based on gs paper 2 the question is india has been witnessing rising intolerance and polarization in the form of hate crimes like honor killings cow vigilantism mob lynching etc in the light of the above statement suggest suitable measures to deal with such crimes effectively now for answering this question first you have to define hate crimes hate crimes are the crimes which are carried out because of prejudice or hate towards a person or group on the basis of their religion race etc then you have to give uh, examples such as mob lynching cow vigilantes honor killing etc as the example for hate crimes then you can also quote the 2018 supreme court statement the supreme court said that rising intolerance and growing polarization in the society must be curbed the supreme court also requested the states to pass law to criminalize it and instill a sense of fear among the perpetrators you can also say that our prime minister is also criticizing cow vigilantism then you can mention some of the measures which were taken by states such as the laws passed by the states of manipur and rajasthan for this you can take our today's discussion which was totally based on rajasthan's uh, bill for curbing mob lynching and honor killing then you can say how these uh, laws will help to curb the hate crimes you can say that it prevents hate crimes uh, it makes society more tolerant it prevents uh, social polarization it maintains social fabric that is a unity in diversity and uh, you can say it allays fear of minorities it is a progressive step for the modern india with this we have come to the end of today's hindu news analysis if you like the video don't forget to like comment and share and do subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel for more updates related to civil service examination preparation